close can you go? How close can you go? Oops, <laughs> maybe that's a bit too far. Sorry, here, that's better. <laughs> hey, good to have you here. Thank you so much for coming over. Thank you for clicking on the video. This is the opportunity once again that I give myself, I indulge myself in taking all the names, having attached them to blooms, doing videos to dedicate names to Blooms as a thank you for your support on my channel. Be it that you've commented, if you've subscribed and I can see you in the back that you have subscribed. These are the two ways I can identify that you have interacted with me and have made yourself known. And that is why back in April 2020, I started this series so that I could always, always reach out to people personally, as best as this platform permits, of course, to say thank you personally, shout out names, attach them to blooms so that you know I see you. Now, unfortunately, orchids grow slowly and blooms don't last very long. So it's a hustle, hustle, hustle to get those names out and to film those clips. Seeing as I can't say thank you to everybody name by name by name in every single episode, this here is my fabulous Dendrobium hibiki who blooms for everybody not mentioned here today. And because this orchid is such a wonderful performer and the blooms are so long lasting, I will show it again and again and again. It helps me out to be able to dedicate more blooms to more names and get down that list. I also want to take the opportunity to say a special thank you to all the Orchid Ninjas that are supporting my channel by becoming Orchid Ninjas members, in adverted commas. You are so appreciated. Know that. I am hoping that the future of my channel, that things will only get better and I will be able to do your trust and your vote of confidence in me and your support justice. I would love for it to go so much faster, but YouTube has a problem with my channel, it would appear. So if you're seeing this video, not just the Orchid Ninjas, but anybody watching this video, would you please, please either share it or mention my channel to people, friends, Orchid Society members you may know. Ask them to subscribe. I am down here in beautiful southern Spain, which for some reason YouTube just cannot find in its algorithm. So if I could get some more traffic on my channel, I would so appreciate it. And let me know if you have shared my videos. I really want to thank Thank you in advance for doing that for me. And I hope the upcoming blooms will help inspire you if you're still in doubt as to whether I have enough to share, I have enough blooms to show, I have enough variety, who knows? Maybe all these things are a factor. So let's go and have a look-see at blooms that have already bloomed out, but I managed to get them clipped and dedicated and see whose name comes up. This is Podungus dactyliferas. No, I am not repeating a dedication. This is the first spike that opened. We saw that in a previous episode of Blooms For You. Let's turn her around because back in that episode, I pointed out three more spikes. Oh, and as I turn her, oh, isn't this just adorable? I promise we're gonna get in a little bit closer because yes, that white pot in the background is really masking the delicate white blooms or should I say the delicate glass transparent blooms because these blooms are so tiny even though there's a multitude of them but I have two spikes that have opened up this time around. I'm dedicating the bloom count and divvying it up between Miss Elegy, Sharon Kayser, Carol Perkins and Emmanuel Perez. Thank you to all of you so much for your support on my channel by Podangus Dactyliferas 2.0 Blooms for you. And I can't tell you how excited I am because yes, you heard correctly 2.0. I failed at my first Podangus and this one came into my collection in the fall of 2021. I was not expecting it to bloom because of acclimating and all that fun stuff that orchids have to do. And guess what? She also comes from Kenya and thereabouts. But her natural habitat and I, we share a common home base. <laughs> so I took advantage of the late afternoon sun 
in the hopes that I could share with you all the beautiful, beautiful details of the blooms. Not only because of their magnificent translucent appearance, but also to showcase a little bit that tiny little spur, get a feel for what the column looks like. No, I will not be pollinating this orchid in order to get a seed pod. <laughs> I would need something high tech microscope or something like that to get that job done. But wow, considering that we come from the same environment, I have to admit I have never seen this orchid personally in the wild in Kenya. When I did my research back in the day to build this collection, I of course went into orchids from Africa because my collection is built around memories, locations and names of everything that I hold dear to my heart. And Padangus ductolitheras fell into my lap via the Google. And from then on in, I had to have her. And I'm very, very happy to have a 2.0. And of course, the fact that she is doing really well in her snazzy soap dish. This is no fancy pot. It is now. It's good enough for my ductolitheras because she is absolutely loving it. Touch wood, I know, famous last words. But all she's got in there is lava rock. And I'm so pleased also to report that the one root that went down into the media is functioning and is probably the one that is sustaining the orchid long term, while the others, of course, being a little bit more aerial, I'm very cautious about the misting and I don't want to lose my orchid simply because I think it needs more humidity, which it does. But having one functioning root in the media, that is the one I target. And honestly, if she can come here, acclimate, settle in, despite the adverse conditions I have in the winter, and do this, well, talk about a fighter and a keeper. <laughs> I love her. Oh, by the way, no, she is absolutely not fragrant. I have tried all hours of the day to see if at some point she is fragrant, including at night, but no dice. So how she gets a pollinator to appreciate her, seeing as the blooms are so minute, including being translucent, which is the biggest charm of everything about these blooms. I need to research a little bit more to be able to answer that question. Anyway, as you can see, I can yap away about my little Kenyan Rafiki here, but most importantly, a big Asante Sana from Podangas Dactylotheras and myself too. Miss Elegy, Sharon Kayser, Carol Perkins, and Emmanuel Perez. It is my absolute pleasure to dedicate Spikes 3 and 4 to you and use them as the vessel to express my appreciation to you for your support on my channel. Thank you so very, very much. First time bloomer here at Ninja Orchids. Welcome, Panarica Brasavole. Woohoo! Being in southern Spain, when I say Brasavole and I'm saying welcome, it's almost natural to say welcome, Panarica Brasavole. Ole! <laughs> sorry, I just can't hit. That just, you know, I'm sorry. Come on, Brasavole, southern Spain, Ole. I know, I know. The fact that I'm even trying to explain it, that is embarrassing. But here we are, considering the state of the orchid. <clears throat> yeah, well, we'll get to that. But considering the state of the orchid, I am very, very happy to dedicate this first spike of my Panarica Brasavole. Ole? No, kidding. To Ana Dazione, Miss Lou 2425, Ellen Chris, Laura and Billy Fennel, Tape and View Pastoral, and Rufiat Rufiat. Thank you so much to all of you for your support on my channel. I really, really appreciate it. Your comments, etc. Everything, your time watching my videos, your encouraging comments, the whole nine yards. What you see in the viewfinder and on some of the stills that I am including in this clip is a mix of the true colors of the petal sepals and the lip and then a little bit enhanced because of the late afternoon sun that plays and has a reflection on the petals and sepals simply because in actual fact they have a very washed out orange juice kind of color in real life. If you can imagine the color of a freshly pressed orange juice being nice, rich orange, but you cannot handle the acid of said orange juice, so you dilute it with some water, and that is the color of the petals and sepals in real life. 
So on occasions, what you see in the viewfinder is a rich orange, and that is not true. But she is very beautiful. I'm still getting used to the blooms. I knew what to expect because, well, when I bought her, I looked at the pictures and I said, yep, star-shaped, funky epidendrum lip. I'm all over it. Give it to me. But that was two years ago, and since then, I kind of had forgotten what I had ordered in form of color and blooms, and I didn't bother looking it up until she opened her blooms just to verify that it is, in actual fact, a brassa bolet. Ole. But <laughs> because the other panorica that I had turned out to be mislabeled. There's one thing that I am getting used to, is the fact that the blooms don't open up flat. Now, in some way that also has its charm but until i don't get used to it then you know i have to figure out do i like or don't i like they are also not fragrant but if my prismarta carpa is anything to go by they should be very long lasting the first bloom on the spike opened almost 10 days ago so we have a gradual opening and i still have a bud to go at the top but since those 10 days and the lowest blooms have not opened up flat well, we can pretty much say that these blooms will always have somewhat of a claw shape to them. I do like what I see in the images and I like what I see in the viewfinder. Maybe that is a sign of what's to come in the future, but who doesn't love a first time bloomer? The orchid itself came with black spots all over the leaves and I thought I had eradicated that. When the new growth grew, it was all clean and lovely and things were looking very, very good. Unfortunately, it turns out that the new growth now also has that spotting right here. So whatever is ailing my Panarica, well, we're just going to look at it like this. <laughs> this way we can somewhat, yeah, we can, you know, pretend that's not there but we can somewhat just appreciate the blooms and celebrate a first time bloomer and dedicate the bloom one more time to Anna Daccione, Miss Lou 2425, Ellen Chris, Laura and Billy Fennell, Tap and View Pastoral and Rufiat Rufiat. Know that it is my absolute pleasure to dedicate my Panarica Brassavole, Ole, to all of you, as a massive, massive thank you for your support on my channel. I hope you're all doing well in your part of the world. Dedicating my first spike, yes, you heard correctly, my first spike of Neostylus Lusneri to Sylvia Sell, Bamanana, Mike Vincent, anchovy and beans anchovy and beans is a translation from a korean name that came up in my subscriber list so i hope that that is a correct translation and i'm not making a mistake nancy johnston and melissa morales the first spike of my neo stylus lucneri blooms for you and i say the first spike because looky here looky here there are three fans in this basket right now so we have the first fan that I bought back in the day, maturing nicely. And then two years ago, it started on a second fan over here. Last year, it started on another fan over here. So yeah, first time bloomer on a second fan of my Neo Stylus Lusneri. And soon, hopefully, we are going to have ourselves a basket full of goodness of Neo Stylus Lusneri. I have taken a lot, a lot of pictures. It is late afternoon. I wanted to play with the light a little bit, and I hope that you enjoy the stills that I shall be including in this clip. The fragrance of this orchid is divine. Having the Van der Falcata as a parent, and of course the Rinko Stylus as a parent, very, very fragrant orchids. One is fragrant during the day, the other is nocturnally fragrant, and the combination of the two gives me here in my environment a beautiful, beautiful, subtle vanilla fragrance during the day, and then at this time of day, around about 5 36 p.m i start getting the citrusy note of the van der falcata love love me both of those fragrances and it's packed into a very cute compact little primary hybrid that thankfully despite having rinko stylus as a parent <laughs> is doing very very well here and i'm so happy because i cannot grow 
Rinka stylus. It's just far too dry in my climate. And once roots grow on my Neo stylus here, I'm always very, very pleased. And then the challenge is on to make sure that I can get them to grow as long as possible without stopping. I have mine in a setup of just a basket with lava rock. That's it. So the misting is quite heavy during these summer months, but the orchid is going from strength to strength. So it'll be a first time that I've actually got two spikes on the go at the same time. If this spike will hold on because the temperatures are relatively high and my air is super, super dry. Anyway, I don't want to be greedy. What it is doing now is a wonderful step in the right direction and the steady bloom count on a spike year in year out makes me happy as you can imagine because at least we've got that dialed in her magnesium deficiency is slowly starting to correct itself at least with what is growing new there are no signs of deficiency at all thank goodness because at the beginning of the season i was very very concerned seeing as the light levels were extremely low during a time of year when this one starts to really get growing in my climate so yeah coming soon a second spike on a blooming size orchid but with a first time blooming fan i love it <laughs> But I don't want to omit the dedication because I really appreciate the support on my channel from Sylvia Seo, Bamanana, Mike Vincent, anchovy and beans again that's the korean name that i have translated and no offense please if i got that wrong nancy johnston and melissa morales to all of you my neo stylist lusneri first spike it blooms for you as a massive massive thank you for your support on my channel Oh boy, she's pretty and she's got lots of blooms. This is the best bloom spike I have ever had on my Tolumnia Golden Fire. Very fitting, very fitting with the colors, but we'll get to that. First of all, most importantly, the spike of my Tolumnia Golden Fire and all the blooms on that spike, they are dedicated to Frankled Wisdom. And I'm going to pronounce this next name like this. PNGs, Jesus, Hollies 77077. Rachel Graham, Girly Girl, and Kim Dobbins. Super pleased with this spike. Thank you all so very, very much for your support on my channel. I apologize for the dog barking in the background if I can't filter that out. And I've got Siliano to the right of me giving his two cents worth as well. And I'm going to just guess and translate. That is probably a massive thank you from him as well because your support on my channel means a lot and is super super appreciated i played a little bit with the late spanish afternoon sun and put the golden fire through her paces to see how she would respond with a little bit of extra light on her because in truth despite the fact that in the viewfinder she really lives up to her name as in golden fire all the yellow that you see is a little bit paler it's not so warm in real life it is a cooler shade of yellow. I wouldn't even say lemon yellow. And it's not a baby yellow, but it's definitely not that warm of a yellow that you see in the viewfinder. And also what you see as red spotting is in actual fact a deep burgundy. So the contrast is true. At least we can see how the red contrasts beautifully with the yellow in the viewfinder. And the same contrast balance is there in real life. The somewhat paler yellow with the contrast of the deep burgundy has the same balance effect. And I must say it is very pleasing to the eye. And the blooms are relatively large for a tolumnia. So the spike that is currently blooming is coming from this side of the orchid. That is a very nice strong growth, of course, coming through the mesh of the basket. The back of the orchid leaves a little bit to be desired, to be honest. And uh, in another video, we will be investigating what is going on with my tolumnias. And it's not really, let's just say, that big a deal. It's not like I'm trying to be dramatic about anything. But I've been working against getting any scale to infest and take out my tolumnias. I'm winning, but I have two that are not looking that great. And I have a feeling that not only are the fans in the back here now dying off, but you see the back of the orchid right here is growing another growth, which is still pretty immature, so I can't compare whether it's going to become as lush and big as this one right here. But 
you know, certain things I need to keep an eye on because where they are hanging in their summer location, yeah, they get misted every single day. And I give them a once over with a little bit of a closer look, of course, more than once a day because they're so pretty. And I have to be so careful because Tolumnias and Scale, you get them in there. It's very difficult to remove them, even though the garlic alcohol is doing really well. Because if I did not have the garlic alcohol, I would be in much, much bigger trouble, including this Tolumnia. But she at least has one side that is growing strong and the other side is giving it a go. Tolumnia Golden Fire has never bloomed as good as this since she arrived in my collection four years ago. And for that reason, of course, once again, it is my absolute pleasure to say thank you to Frankled Wisdom, PNGs. Holly's 77077, Rachel Graham, Girly Girl, and Kim Dobbins via my Tolumnia Golden Fire to all of you. Thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. I so appreciate it. If you've made it this far, thank you so very, very much. I thought we'd get in a little bit closer and I'm just gonna keep turning the pot. See what comes into focus and just, oh, wow. Take in the beauty that is Dendrobium hibiki. This orchid never ever ceases to amaze me. I always feel as though when she comes back into bloom, I see her again for the first time. I mean, even this vista, look at that. I have so many images of Dendrobium hibiki, <laughs> but every single angle is another eye-watering, beautiful sight. I mean, look, don't you feel like you could take a snorkel and be like under the sea and be going through there, through a coral garden? I just love it anyway. I appreciate your time. Thank you so, so much for watching. Remember that if you could please, please spread the word that my channel exists and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Know that you are welcome and thank you so much for doing so. I wish you a beautiful day on one condition though, as per usual, I say it every time and I mean it every time. Please stay safe. Take care. Bye.